straight since the loss to Michigan State out in Portland, and the Tar Heels have been very impressive, Jason. Well, a team that has aspirations of defending their national championship, and they've dotted the eyes of rebounding, having a more assertive effort defensively with dominant performances the last three times out. The Heels are absolutely on a roll. Well, the dominant performance for Carolina this year so far has mostly been dominated by Luke May. The best story in college basketball this early season, Luke May, plus 15 points per game. This guy does a little bit of everything for the Tar Heels, shoots it from distance, controls the backboard on that young front line, and he also can put the ball in the hole from anywhere on the floor. Well, our Toyota Let's Go places is May's numbers from a year ago to now. He told Roy Williams in the offseason, I'm going to be the hardest working guy on the squad, and he's proven it. Well, guys like that deserve the a claim when it comes to the lights coming on because they put in that work. This young man was prepared, and the Heels needed that production with such a young front line. Well, Larry Hunter and Western Carolina are here after a big win over their rival Appalachian State. We'll see if the Tar Heels can get their fourth straight win tonight. First half coming up right after this. Number 11, North Carolina here tonight. Been since late January 1957 that the Catamounts and Tar Heels have met in basketball. Western Carolina, while winless on the road in five tries, is here after a very important one-point win over Appalachian State on Monday night. Longtime rivals are the Mountaineers and the Catamounts. And here is Roy Williams' lineup tonight. Jason, no real change from what we've seen out of the Tar Heels so far this year in their nine games. Well, led by Joel Berry, in my opinion, the best leader in college basketball at the point guard position, Luke May. We've spoken at length about his early season production. And their counterparts across the way, Western Carolina. This is a ball club that loves to spread the floor, drive and kick, and freshman Matt Halverson is a sharpshooter supreme. Hill's going to have to find him early and often. That is Halverson with the ball off the deflection, and the opening tap belongs to the Catamounts. And here is Darius Parks, a redshirt senior from Charlotte. And this is Habubakar Matumbo. Mark Goslin, Parks, and the layup driving in for Matumbo. And that's what Western Carolina is going to do. They're going to play four round one, spread you out a lot of ball and body movement, trying to create angles to the hoop. Joel Berry out front. And bounds away to Amius. Mike Amius had the game-winning dunk on uh, Monday night in Cullowee to beat Appalachian. Part of a 19.7 uh, rebound effort by Amius, who's really come on the last couple of ball games for Coach Larry Hunter. Goslin a three. And it finds a friendly rim. Mark Goslin's ninth three of the year. Nice roll and replace action. When you set that ball screen and the big setting the screen rolls, Western Carolina is going to replace with the shooter. And Brooks fouled on the bunt. On the bump by Amius. That'll be number one on Amius, number one on Western Carolina. And here's a young, uh, a gentleman who has uh, always been interesting to visit with, interesting to talk basketball, and that's Larry Hunter now in 13 seasons in Cullowee. But this is his 38th year as a head coach, Jason. Well, a great coach, a great offensive mind, a program builder. You look what he did at Ohio and now what he's done in Western Carolina. And this is a club that's going to compete in the SoCon. They really challenge themselves. Here in the preseason, playing Clemson, UMass, Minnesota, Cincinnati, they're going to be battle-tested and ready to compete for a Southern Conference Championship. Freshman Garrison Brooks has got Carolina's first point of the night. Catamounts off to an early four-point advantage. Matumbo, redshirt senior. Carolina man-to-man -man early. Parks, Williams fights through. Boy, Amy has caught him with the screen and will be given his second foul. And that's a tough way to start the opening, what, minute and a half for Western Carolina as Roy Williams looks on now in 15 seasons in Chapel Hill, 30th as a head coach. And that means 15 in Lawrence and 15 in Chapel Hill. Amy has picks up his second here early. All got batted around after the miss. Halverson scoops it up. One of the keys for Western Carolina to compete in this game is going to be how can they rebound the basketball 
Early in this contest, doing a nice job. Five purple jerseys touching a white jersey, clearing that rebound. Baseline. Amius has the dunk rattle out. Make no mistake, Wes, this team is not afraid. They've been on the road in tough environments. They're here not to just compete. They're here to possibly get a win. And the Heels have to command the paint. Nice drive and dish there. And for this young front line of North Carolina, you want to hand deliver baskets. Brooks does a nice job keeping it high for the easy two. Williams out to defend on the perimeter against Parks. Here's Halverson's first shot of the night. And Pinson able to pull it away, but could not control it. Amius will get it. Well, Theo has to simply go get that basketball. He waited for it and allowed Western Carolina player to take it away from him. You must go get that ball with two hands and corral it. Williams down low. Here's May. Luke May on the board for the first time. Tenth best field goal shooter in the ACC, second in scoring, second in rebounding. The numbers are pretty impressive through eight games, or nine games, rather. Goslin. Here's Parks pulling the trigger. Brooks the long rebound. Barry ahead from May. Catch and layup. Pretty playmaking by Carolina in transition, Jason. Well, the main key in this game for Western Carolina is going to be defensive transition. And a big part of that is taking good shots. Parks took an ill-advised quick shot, which led to a long rebound. And Carolina's bigs understand if they run, Joel Berry will pitch that ball ahead. Nice find and finish. First lead of the night for Carolina, and you see a turnover. Second on the Catamounts. Luke May is a guy that does a little bit of everything. The Hills getting it done defensively. Brooks and Pinson there with the block. And then Luke May doing a nice job creating the angle. Up and over. Tar Heels. Cut him out. Good ball game here early. Tonight's edition of the Ford Keys to the Game. When you talk about Western Carolina contained transition baskets, you do that by taking good shots and taking care of the basketball. North Carolina defensive intensity. We understand this is a ball club that can put points up in bunches, but the commitment to defense, rebounding the basketball as a unit, is something the Hills have to continue to get better at to be the dominant team we think they can be. Devin Peterson has, uh, or I beg your pardon, Matumbo on the floor. We expect to see Devin Peterson at some point tonight here in the ball game. Kenny Williams a three from the corner. Williams, the second best three-point shooter in the ACC, Jason. That's his 20th of the year already. A lot of the timeout, Western Carolina showed zone. And against his zone, you have to find the open areas. Nice ball movement. Kenny Williams shooting a hot basketball in this early season. Carolina missed their first three shots. They've now hit four in a row, and they're on a 10-0 run. Matumbo. Goslin launches. Long rebound, Barry, and it puts Carolina ahead in transition and tripped up from behind, and Amos has got his third. Amos picks up number three. All three team fouls belong to the junior college transfer from Lake Worth, Florida. And that is a big mark in Larry Hunter's attack. Well, he's the best big they have on the front line when you think of back to the basket, controlling the backboard. The guy you talked about, 19 big points in the game winner against Appalachian State. He brings athleticism, agility on the defensive end to move around. Big loss for the Countermouse, him going to the bench here in the first half with three. Charlindez Brooks will check into the ball game at 6-9 to replace Amias. And Jeb Hartness, who works with Tony Green and Tim Clockerty tonight, and a piece of game management at the scoring table. And Carolina with 23 to shoot puts it in play. May fires over Goslin. Rolls in. Seven for May on his third field goal. Can you see the confidence just oozing out of this young man? Catches it on the wing. A nice triple threat. The jab step creates the space, and he's shooting the basketball from the perimeter with supreme confidence. Western Carolina's gone four minutes without a field goal. Missed their last five shots. Matumbo changes that. 
second three of the year for Habubakar Matumbo. And that's a good sign for the Catamounts. He struggled in this early season. Matumbo, a guy that led him in scoring a season ago, but has struggled a bit here early. Good sign knocking down that three. But Kenny Williams is a guy who has not struggled, <laughs> shooting over 50% from behind the arc. He comes off that screen, feet set, hands ready, eyes locked. He's going to knock it down. Here's Matumbo against Benson. Tar Heel lead is eight. After the two clubs swap threes a moment ago. Goslin with eight to shoot. Williams took it away. Goslin to beat. And he gets the layup. Boy, Kenny Williams with eight impressive points here early, Jason. Well, you see the defensive intensity picking up for the Tar Heels. They're taking Western Carolina out of their scoring area and out of their scoring rhythm. And Kenny Williams once again with a deflection. And almost over here sitting with you. Took out my monitor and then almost ended up here with you. Well, there he comes off a staggered screen. He immediately gets his feet set. The deflection, the push. And the nice fillet off the glass with the finish. I was about to give him a headset after that transition. Maybe come over here and call the game a little bit, too. Tell him you got one shot left. Still I got a shot left. I can shoot it. I'm not sure if I can defend anybody on this court right now. <laughs> Sterling Manley's coming to the ball game for the first time for Carolina. So is Andrew Playtech. Foul line jumper by Brooks, no good. And a rebound pulled away. That's Maurice Smith. Trying to answer for the Catamounts. Henson weaves through, feeds Manley. Sterling Manley. I really like this young man, Sterling Manley. A guy, look at his length, look at his size, those shoulders. He's going to grow into those shoulders, people. But running the floor, and as I said, the upperclassmen have to spoon feed these freshmen until they're ready. Nice find by Pinson, and Manley knows how to finish at the rim. Steger can't hit the layup. May on the outlet. Playtex catch. A couple of fakes, and then got it blocked by Maurice Smith. It'll stay with the Tar Heels, but here's Sterling Manley. Well, it's created by Theo Pinson, the nice drive. And when big fellas run, you must reward them. The nice shovel pass. But Manley was ready. His hands were ready. He was expecting the basketball. And he's so long and athletic. Of the trio, he's one, I think, that has the biggest upside. The length, the size, the ability to finish over either shoulder in the post. I think he has a really bright future here in North Carolina. Brandon Robinson into the ball game for the first time and a bounce pass toward Manley. A foul is ticketed to Adam Sled, sophomore from Roanoke, Virginia. That'll be his first and the fourth on Western Carolina. Tar Heels on a bit of a tear now after a slow start from the floor. Barry, now Manley the catch. Can't finish with the right hand. Therese Parks, step back three over Playtech. And May the rebound from in front. Here's Robinson on the run out. And lost it off his foot with the dribble and then called for the bump. And Brandon Robinson, the sophomore from suburban Atlanta, his first. Carolina's first in their first turnover of the night. And here's Jalik Felton coming in for Coach Williams. As the Tar Heels summon the freshman from West Columbia, South Carolina, into the ball game for the first time. Felton averaging about 12 minutes a game. Manley about 12 minutes. Playtech about 11, Jason. I mean, they're, they're getting rotation minutes here in their first nine college games. This is a great opportunity. You talk about Jaleek Felton, seventh woods out, stretch Franklin's foot out indefinitely. So for this young man, it's a great opportunity. But the Tar Heels doing a great job early on. Well, when we come back, we'll update you on Ty Solomon of South Carolina State, a story we covered for you on Saturday in Raleigh after this. Now at Minnesota. Sets into the South Carolina State NC State game. Basketball became meaningless. And that's when Tavoris Solomon suffered a medical.
Crystal in front of the Bulldogs bench. And, of course, EMT and EMS people were on the scene, very emotional. And we now know that he was resuscitated with the help of South Carolina State basketball trainer Tyler Long, who you see in the picture there, and these fine gentlemen with the EMS and EMT people. And we're pleased to report that Ty is resting and, and recovering. And uh, what an amazing incident. And yet uh, the blessings and the prayers and all the things that were sent Ty's way and just the emotion of the moment rendered the game itself meaningless. And as we come back to live action, we just wanted to tell you that Ty is doing better. It's a story that got captured nationally, Jason. And one of the things that uh, we're thankful to say, he's he's going to be okay, it looks like. Well wishes and prayers is two tie and the entire Bulldog family there at South Carolina State. Maurice Smith traveled with it, coming down the lane, and, you know, perspective is one of the things you get from an incident like this, and Ty Solomon offered this to Steve Weissman of the Raleigh News and the Observer on Monday <clears throat> about how you cherish everything. Don't take anything for granted. And don't hold grudges with anyone if you can get over it quickly as you can because you're not promised anything. And our best to Ty Solomon and Murray Garvin and his staff and their team as they get back to action after the exam break. Jalik Felton knocks down a three, his fourth of the year. After a, maybe a slow start in the first 100 seconds tonight, Jason Carolina's rolling now. 15-point lead early. And it's been defensively doing the job being more active, active hands. And Robinson fouled on the way up, and that was Desmond Johnson, the freshman from Memphis, committing his first and number five on the Catamounts. Well, as a freshman, you want opportunity. And Jalik Felton right now has a golden opportunity to command that backup point guard position. Joe Barry is not going to play 40 minutes a night. They're going to need someone to come in, control the team, be able to put guys in the right place and make outside shots. Seventh Woods, we talked about, has a stress fracture in his left foot. Right. He's out indefinitely. A prime opportunity for number five in white to come in, get better, gain that experience. More importantly, gain his coach's trust. A couple of free throws for Robinson. Jason, as we watch Carolina go back defensively, why are they better defensively? maybe then Coach Williams' teams have been maybe, what, the last three to five years, I guess. This I looks like a really good defensive team. Well, you see they're pressuring the wings again. You see how they're trying to take the opposition out of their comfort zone. They have more bodies on the wing, a longer rotation right now, and they have bigs that can move, albeit young. This team can play big at times. They can go small. And it all starts with ball pressure. And Joe Barry, there's not many better than him. Steger's three. And almost went over the glass. Recovered inside. Adam Sled. And Tim Clockerty has whistled a foul. It's on Sled. It'll be his second. And that's quickly six on Larry Hunter's team. I think that defensive improvement's one thing people weren't expecting about this Carolina team. Well, Coach Williams has talked about they don't have a rim protector, and I say not yet. You have three guys with great size, the ability to change shots, and as that continues to grow, as those three freshman bigs gain experience, now you're talking about having guys you can rotate in to protect the rim, blocking shots and rebounding. When that happens, the Tar Heels are only going to get even better. And a turnover. Johnson on the look ahead, the freshman from Memphis, number seven in this opening half against the Catamount. Carolina has got nine field goals. They've assisted on eight of them here in the early going. And the Tar Heels on a 12-0 run to build this early 17-point lead. Felton lost the handle on it, but he got the bounce to Manley, and he traveled. Third turnover on the Tar Heels. They never get Kenny Williams back in the ball game. As you get a look at... Sterling Manley, 6'11 freshman, 240 pounds, Jason. He's a big kid. On that possession, he never quite got his balance, got the diagonal screen, dove to the strong side block. It wasn't a great pass, but he gains his balance. That's an easy two inside. Arno Steger. Robinson the rebound. Long bounce pass for Kenny Williams. Mark, 
Robinson. Nice kickback for Felton. Jalik Felton's coming to the ball game and knocked down a couple of threes. He only had three coming into the ball game. He's got five now. And Western Carolina's only had one field goal in the last 10.05 of this first half. And what I like even more than the three-point shot by Jalik Felton, his prowess defensively right there. He made me look good because I was going to his defense. <laughs> and he immediately picks the pocket of a catamount player. Robinson, baseline deflected back out for Penson. Theo launches. Rattled out. And Manley. And the foul is going to be called on Desmond Johnson, I believe. Jeb Hartness gets Johnson for his second and the seventh on Western Carolina. Sterling Manley going up high. Not quite sure how that's not an over the back call. Panamount player had him boxed out, but. When you're 6'10 and you can get off the floor like that, it's tough to keep a guy off the glass, but more importantly, no one is hurt. Coach Larry Hunter doesn't like it. Manley steps to the line for one and one. Sterling Manley is 65% on the year, 17 to 26. Carolina's a team shooting 70.3 coming into nine. Free throw fell off the front rim and Gosselin the rebound. Carolina's had runs of 13-0 and now 15-0 in this first half. Well, Coach Larry Hunter challenged his team, don't be afraid to drive the ball to the basket, taking a lot of outside shots, which lead to long rebounds. That possession, move the ball around, got a good look. On the road in this environment, you must be able to knock down that shot. Don't forget ACC College Hoops, brought to you in part by Tire Pros of the Carolinas. Ask your participating Tire Pros of the Carolinas dealer how you can save $25 on your next tire purchase. But all Carolina so far here, in their second meeting ever with Western Carolina. May. A little up and under on Goslin. Luke May with nine on his fourth field goal. He's scoring the ball from everywhere on the floor. Shows great patience inside. Excellent footwork. Up and under for an easy two. Otto Steger. Darius Parks kicks it back. Long three by Steger. And Brandon Huffman the rebound. The big fella from Goldsboro on the floor. Barry doing Joel Barry things. Can't finish it. Huffman lost it. May saves it. Here's Kenny Williams a three. Oh my goodness. 11 for Williams. That's his third triple of the first half. Kenny Williams had a reputation in high school as an excellent shooter. He's dealt with injuries. He's healthy. He's worked. And another guy like Luke May, who understood the moment was coming that the Hills needed him to step up. He's been prepared this season. Steger short. And the rebound to Pensick. Theo tried to get it to May, deflected and turned over. Four on the Tar Heels. And here's Devin Peterson into the ball game and now cleaned up and the jump shot for Parks off the elbow. Snaps the Carolina run. First field goal since 14-48. to go. Kenny Williams has got 11, including three of these in this first half. Tar Heels in command by 23. Steve Terry here for TS, your local Ford dealer, and Blue Cross and Blue Shield of North Carolina. The tools you want, you got it. Well, one of the unique things here at the University of North Carolina that's been uh, brought to the public's attention in the last couple of weeks is the more than 12,000 items that have been donated by the family of Dean Smith to the 
uh, special collections library, the Wilson Special Collections Library here at the university, and it includes things like you saw a letter from Bob Dole to Coach Smith, a uh, piece of the net from 1982. Coach Smith's book report from the 1940s in Emporia, Kansas. Just an amazing collection of things, basketball-related, life-related. Uh, fascinating contribution from the family of Dean Smith to the University of North Carolina. I know my brother and I still have the handwritten letters <laughs> from our respective recruitments yeah. uh, of Coach Smith. Something my mom has kept all the years, and we look back on it and have great memories of such a great coach, but an even better man Coach oh, Smith was. Unbelievable. Ball got knocked away on an entry pass for Brandon Huffman. Fifth turnover on Carolina, second in as many possessions for the Tar Heels. First time we've gotten a look at Yellum Olshe. And they're battling Huffman, who made the save on the deflection of May. Lead ahead for Joel Berry, got deflected by Peterson. Now, Devin Peterson did not play in the win against Appalachian State, but is back on the floor here tonight as Goslin knocks down the baseline jumper. He's got five. He and Matumbo have combined for 10 of the Catamounts, 12 here in the first half. Goslin has a nice touch. He's a stretch four. A guy that can stretch the defense, knock down outside shots, and they need his production in this contest. May, three at the front. A dozen for Luke May now, second triple. And defensively, you cannot have breakdowns. That was a late switch. Not a great communication by the counter mouse. And when you leave Luke May open, especially what's at the top of the key, yeah. you can ring those up. He's shooting an excellent ball from the distance this year. Carolina's already got seven threes. That's more than their average coming in. You see the layup on the cut by Parks for his second field goal. And there goes Williams to the rack. Kenny Williams now with 13 in the first half. North Carolina running the ball down the floor. The Catamount staff yelling to their team, get back. Mm. But, Wes, you can't simulate how fast this break is coming in practice until you see it live. The Hills, they're not dribbling up the floor. They're passing the ball up the sideline, looking to attack early and often. And it may not be a better player at doing that than Joel Berry. So strong, so physical, gets low in his drive, able to power to the rim off the glass. Well, you and I talked about it last year. He plays with a football mentality. Absolutely. Peterson in the corner, parks a three. Missed everything and made the rebound. Lead Huffman. Big fella made the save, but turned it over to the Catamounts in doing so. Well, that's a know your personnel pass there. Mm. Maybe in another another year or so, Huffman will be able to catch that pass. But for him, you must let him run, stop, get set, then enter the ball to him. I don't think he's capable of catching that ball on the run and doing something with it. Devin Peterson is a senior from Milton, Georgia. For Parks in the corner. Good. Darice Parks, 38% on the year from three. He's got seven in the first half. And Barry fouled on the drive, and that'll get us to a timeout. Luke May getting the job done. When he's open from three, feet set, eyes locked, bang. The perfect gift, one-fifth carat stud stick. And he has that right now. <laughs> he, he's gotten off to a great start for the Tar Heels in every first half. It seems this season, moving without the ball, the finish from the corner, in transition, the fillet off the glass. And top of the key, a guy shooting over 50% from distance. That's a layup for him right now. And the Tar Heels needed outside shooting. Kenny Williams, as I said, he's healthy this year. He put in the work, and he's reaping the benefits here on the floor. Jason, he was here three hours before tip tonight, going through an array of shooting drills as Joel Berry knocks the first one down after the foul going to break on Peterson. Guy shows up three hours before a game. So he knows there's a break coming in their schedule here. But on game night, he's three hours ahead. It's about putting work in. On many occasions, I see Kenny Williams, Joel Berry, they're working with assistant coach Hubert Davis, who happened to be one of the best shooters in Carolina history himself. Yep. Turned over by the Catamounts. Oh! The foul will wipe out. A little glitter dish from Berry to Theo Pinson.
I don't know who's more upset, Joel or Theo. Well, I think Theo liked it because he just reenacted <laughs> what he did there. But <laughs> foul is on Peterson. It's his second. That's nine now on the Catamounts as Barry knocks down another free throw. Joel, by the way, the third, the ninth best free throw shooter in the ACC coming in to play tonight. Second one good. At 27 in Charlotte against Davidson. 13 against Tulane. He's had three straight double-figure games. Play tech on the floor to replace Williams a moment ago. Here's Parks. He's had the hot hand for Western Carolina. Now has 10 of their last 12. North Carolina in their run and jump series. If you take care of the ball, if you're strong, you'll get a good look. Catamount's able to knock in a three, but defensively, you must contain the basketball ball screen defense. You have to have great communication. Be there at the point of attack. Joel Berry with the drive fine. Brooks takes the harm, heads to the line for two. Yeah, ten fouls now in Western Carolina, so here's Garrison Brooks. Freshman from Lafayette, Alabama. 6'9", just 215 pounds. So we talked about Manley, how long he is. Brooks at 215, what can he be, 230? Oh, absolutely. Like, these are babies out here right now, this front line. But you look at their build, you look at their shoulders and what they can be, what they're going to be. Mm. Great size, great length. It's going to take time and experience. But they're getting that. They're getting the experience and live action to do some things. And we've seen flashes of what all can be. Halverson a step back three. Well, Matt Halverson's first basket tonight's his 25th three of the year. And here's a lead. And Brooks had it blocked by Charlendez Brooks. Halverson back the other way. Parks guns again. Tap follow, rebound Felton. Outlet, here's Pinson. Challenges Halverson and scores. First points for Theo Pinson. Carolina's got the number doubled on Western Carolina with a minute 20 to go in the first half. Halverson a three. May the rebound. Outlet for Playtech. And blocked out of there by Brooks, but a foul. We'll get the Tar Heels to the line. Here's Theo Pinson again. Well, Pinson in transition. He's an excellent finisher, known as a slasher. There contorts his body around the defender. The scoop and kiss off the glass. Theo Pinson's one of the most important players on this team. He's a guy that fills the stat sheet. He's the best defender on the squad, can guard multiple positions. And he'll be asked to play the four times this year when North Carolina goes small and use their four-guard lineup. He's that Swiss Army knife that does a little bit of everything that can help the Tar Heels make it to the winner's circle. Is he their best defender? Jason? Absolutely. He's their best defender. He can guard multiple positions. I think Joel Berry, he puts the heat on the basketball. He's the head of the snake. The point of attack, you need his aggression. But Theo Pinson understands where to be in rotation, the length, the size. He blocks shots. He's a guy that you can move around and trust. He can get the job done defending multiple players. I think a lot of people a year ago thought of him as like an energy guy. He's probably developed in a senior season now to more of a complete player than most expected them. Well, the only thing he can't do at a consistent level right now is shoot the outside shot. Right. He's the best passer on this team. He's a guy that defends, rebounds, blocks shots. He fills the stat sheet night in, night out. Spot up by Peterson. Rebounded by Brooks. Final minute of the opening half. Felton tees up Robinson. Brandon Robinson's second three of the year. He's got five in the first half. And that's what you want from Jaleek Felton. Pushing in transition, head up, understanding what's around you. And West, make the simple play. Mm. Nice pass, and Robinson does the job from distance. Carolina's got 14 assists on 17 baskets here in the first half. They're 8 of 11 from three. Halverson skips it to Parks. Boy, Darius Parks has had a nice first half for Coach Hunter's club. Three seconds left. Felton at the foul line. And the Tar Heels score 53 in the opening 20 in Chapel Hill tonight. They've won 22 straight home games.
They're up 27 at halftime, and the Hardys halftime report is next. Welcome back in. College Basketball Live sitting here with a few ACC coaches. There's one first-time head coach in this group, David Padgett. When, when some assistants, most assistants, get a head coaching job, it happens in April. You got yours in October. How would you assess the challenges of getting your team ready for the season in the preseason? I don't know if we have enough time to talk about the challenges <laughs> we face, but, uh, you know, the good news about the team I inherited uh, – we have a, a very good mix of older players who've played college basketball, seniors, juniors, even a sophomore, and V.J. King. And we have a very talented freshman class. Obviously, they're freshmen. There's a lot they need to learn and go through. And there's no easy way to get freshman experience except to let them go through it. But our older guys have been tremendous in trying to help the younger guys and get ready for the season. So just each practice, we're just trying to get better than we were the day before. You had a little more lead time when you stepped over from an assistant to replacing John Calipari there at, at Memphis. What advice would you, would you give him stepping in, although the time frame is a little bit different? No, David's going to do a great job, and he's a basketball guy, and his dad was a really good coach as well, too, and, and so he's going to do great. And, um, you know, they're, they're good. Their team's really good. And, you know, following – you know, with Coach Patino, and you know, when I took over at Memphis, following Couch, uh, Coach Calipari, it's just they're hard to do because you know the success that you're following in those, in both guys. So, you just do the best you can. It was a primary head coaching job there at Memphis. You're just getting started, Mike. Reflect on, on what what it was. You're at the pinnacle now, the coaching in the ACC. Reflect to your first head coaching job when you slid into that chair and had that ownership maybe an overwhelming feeling what was that like I think it was I remember my first year at the University of Delaware in 1995 I, I wasn't very trusting of delegating I tried to do everything and a little too much I've learned to delegate more but I think the biggest thing is you try to be yourself you know you've worked for a guy you've been with a head coach I think to develop your own identity and be yourself as soon as you can get confident doing that's going to be helpful Jim what was yeah, like? my, my first head coaching job was at a Division II school called American International College in Springfield, Massachusetts. And um, recruiting there was very, very difficult. But we spotted a young man I thought could really turn our program around. His name is Rick Carlisle. And we tried to recruit <laughs> Rick Carlisle to a Division II school. <laughs> Two years later, I was the assistant at Virginia, and uh, Rick called me. He was playing at the University of Maine, and he transferred to Virginia Helped us get to the Final Four. Now has been in the NBA since 1984. So when you're looking at players and trying to build a program, you got to find good players. Rick was a good player. We just couldn't get him to AIC. Yeah, it doesn't matter where you are. You might be someplace soon that you can actually get him. Buzz, your, your first head coach. Yeah, what was I, that like? I remember it vividly. Uh, very honored, grateful, uh, bigger than any dream I'd ever had. Was very thankful that the University of New Orleans would hire me and uh, have felt that away every day over the last 11 years. Brad? Yeah, I was very blessed. Uh, I took over at uh, UNC Wilmington, having been an assistant there for eight years under a very good coach and Jerry Wainwright. So the program was in, in a great situation. We had good players coming back, a good foundation. We'd been to the tournament. And so really the, the ease of transition for me was, was much easier than most And that I, I already knew the league, I knew the university, uh, and Coach Wainwright had given me a ton of responsibility. So that really gave me a lot of confidence. You mentioned getting to uh, the NCAA tournament, and when you're at maybe a, a lower level or a mid-major school, it's, getting to the tournament's a great accomplishment. When you're in the ACC, it's not just getting to the tournament, it's making a run. You could have a great year, maybe even win a championship in the league, but you don't get to the second weekend, and uh, it's almost forgettable in some fans' eyes. How do you guys self-assess when it comes to success relative to the NCAA tournament? tournament whether it's getting there or advancing deep well for me I mean I, I've tried to be better uh, just about your own personal success and what you define it as I think when I, my time at Memphis uh, I was just I was really unhealthy uh, mentally uh, and and just because I, I lived and died by every single game and I, and I so when I came to Georgia Tech I tried to have a better perspective on things and and it's a work in progress uh, it's hard to get to the tournament. I mean, I thought we had a good year last year, and we finished 11th place in this league. And, I mean, so – and we had eight wins in the league. I don't know if we'll ever get eight wins again in this league. I mean, it's hard to do. And so, you know, if you, you just do the best you can, I've tried to be better about that and 
focusing on just doing the best you can and let the chips fall where they fall. Now, as, a, as a player, obviously, you want to get as deep as you can. What about as a coach? How do you, he said when he started out, he didn't have a healthy perspective. You're just starting out. What's your perspective? Well, I think at Louisville, it's, it's just been long established that getting to the tournament, per se, isn't enough. I think making a deep run is has come to be expected over the last 15, 16 years, and obviously we've had a lot of success. Now, I'm not going to put any pressure on myself or on my team to say, hey, we have to get to the Elite Eight or we have to get to the Final Four, because that's just not realistic. You know, everything we've been going through, me as a first-time head coach, that wouldn't be fair to anybody. So we're just trying to have as good of a season as we can have, win as many games as we can have, kind of just break up into three segments. you got non-conference, you've got conference, and then postseason. So just take it one segment at a time. How does that change as you get deeper into your career? Because when we refer to you guys, how many Final Fours does he have? How many national championships? Well, that dynamic happened a little bit this year for us. We, the two previous years we've been to the Elite Eight, we get knocked out in the second round by a very good West Virginia team. But we got, we finished in the top four of the regular season and got to the championship game of the ACC tournament. And so I was trying to tell our guys that, you know, we had a pretty good run and, and even uh, it was even harder trying to explain that to my fans, but maybe they finally got it at the end of the day. <laughs> what about you, you made a deep run with George Mason, now here you are at Miami. Yeah, 20 years ago, I had an incredible opportunity to talk to the great John Wooden, who won 10 national championships. And he talked about one thing that you had to have to be successful as a coach. And he said, you have to have balance. You have to have the understanding of what your expectations are, maybe very different than what anybody else is. And you just have to have that balance in your life, balance with your team so that you're enjoying the journey. Not so much talking about, did you make the final four? So, uh, and that's the way we've tried to approach it. We just want to be the best we can be every season we're competing. Uh, last thing, Buzz, it's validation though, right? I mean, NCAA tournament, that's a, that's a thing you can sink your teeth into. I think it just depends on what validation and who you're wanting the validation from. Uh, not trying to be holier than now. I like playing in the NCAA tournament because that means I have an extended period of time with our players each day. And so whether we win, whether we get there, I think that's for other people to judge. I think my responsibility as a leader is to help them grow to be the best people they can be. And if that means we play a couple extra games, maybe that time period helps them even more. And Brad, you've had a taste of it there at Clemson. Yeah, yeah, we haven't been in a while. and certainly something that we want to get back to. Uh, you know, we talk a lot about, you know, playing in March with a chance to advance. That's kind of a phrase we use to, to, to kind of keep our momentum going. And I think it's something that you put the NCAA tournament out there, it's not as easy at some programs. It's, mo it's more of a challenge. And, uh, certainly you analyze each team and, and just try to get better working on that with that, that thought in mind for us. Yeah. Good perspective, guys. We'll wrap it up when we return. These guys have left uh, quite a mark on their teams. What about the, the digital footprint, social media? Get into that for a few minutes, guys. All right, let's start with your health. Yeah. You know, you're 70, and yeah. a lot of people want to ask, how, how much longer yeah. do you want to go? Do you want to ask that? Yeah, I'm going to ask that. Gonna I'm going to ask that. you, right. how much longer do you want to go? Yeah, I want to. Uh, I didn't get my knee replaced to retire. Let's put it that way. So I'm 70 years old. I think I'm definitely younger at heart. Uh, I have the knowledge, though, of a 70-year-old who's coached for 42 years and has coached 11 years with the U.S. team. And, I still I think that's a, a good combination, especially at a great school. I want to make a difference. I'm enthusiastic. Come on, Kyle, I got you. Grace and Allen, when describing you, called you a friend. Yeah. Which is interesting for a 21-year-old to call a 70-year-old a friend. Right. How do you think you've been able to connect with players these days and change and, and be able to adapt? Well, I think it's up to the teacher to adapt so that his or her teachings are accepted easier by their pupils. I've had to adapt a lot. Not values, work ethic, and all that, but how you communicate, how you dress, what jokes you tell, do you stay current. Grayson Allen is a really good basketball player. He also appears to be a dirty basketball player. Well, his reputation for this precedes him. What gives you confidence that, that Grayson, if you have confidence, that Grayson has kind of gotten past the, the issues, the tripping issues? And he, and yeah, he can... well, you know, it, it, look, there's no, it, is it more tripping issues or what everyone made of, of a couple 
ish, issues. I want Grayson to be Grayson. Grayson's, a, I think, as good a player as there is in the country. And uh, I want him to be a leader, and I want him to not have a rear view mirror. How much did you worry about him last year, though, because of all the public outcry uh, and the attention that he got? How much were you worried that he'd yeah. be able to handle it all? You would have thought that there was a capital offense that had occurred. That's the attention, I think, that our program brings, the scrutiny. And, you know, you have to learn to live under that microscope. But he has had an opportunity to be in incredible situations where you don't play at the beginning of your freshman year. You are the hero of the national championship game. You're an All-American as a sophomore, and you have an incident, and then that's unbelievably publicized. And then you have another situation, and then you're hurt the whole year. Holy mackerel. He's lived a lifetime in those three years, and I, I think it'll all uh, end up you know, really, really good. How good can this team be? I mean, you have talent. You've got bigs. They're very different than a lot of your previous teams. Yeah, you know, our team is going to be very much a developing team. We have three guys in Marvin Bagley, Wendell Carter, and Marquise Bolden who are going to be pro players, maybe all three of them at the end of this year. We don't have the perimeter depth that we, you know, like the last few years, but we have more big guys. And so we have to adjust what we do, uh, and which we do every year. Has your outlook of recruiting one that's changed? People think it has. No, no. I, you know, everyone talks about us changing our recruiting philosophy. That's, that, that's not the case, you know. It's just that Grand Hill was in the mid-90s or early 90s. If Grand Hill was today, he'd go too. But we would have still recruited Grand Hill, you know, Leitner and Battier, and that's when it started for us with Elton Brand, but he was even here two years. I have not changed. The landscape has changed to where it would be the best decision for them to go, and then I'm okay with that. Saturday, who will strike the Heisman pose? Lamar Jackson. I don't know what else you can say. The kid is just ridiculous. Bryce Love. And Love never lies. Touchdown, Stanford! Baker Mayfield. Here's Mayfield. Highs been hopeful. Baker Mayfield does it! The Heisman Trophy presentation, presented by Nissan, Saturday at 8 on ESPN. Thunder. MLS Cup, Saturday at 4 Eastern on ESPN. Tom Brady, the GOAT, greatest of all time. Let's go! And the Patriots look once again like they are the team to beat in the AFC. We got to set the edge over here and play with power inside. But this New England dynasty knows anything can happen when you come to the heat of Miami late this season. Monday Night Football, Patriots, Dolphins, Monday, 815 Eastern on ESPN. Are you ready? Saturday, two of the top pound-for-pound -pound fighters collide for the WBO Junior Lightweight World title. Vasily Lomachenko and his high-tech fists defend his belt against undefeated Guillermo Wigandau. Gold medal winners square off in a historic night of boxing. Top Rank Boxing, Saturday at 9 on ESPN.
we're at the game. <laughs> I, I know they're going to play at least 20 more minutes, so can we can we stay and watch the rest of that, can too? stick around and watch the second half? <laughs> sure we can. Because <laughs> the Tar Heels are winning, son. 27-point lead for Carolina. We get ready to go to the second half with Jason Capel, West Durham. Great to have you with us for ACC College Hoops tonight. Carolina impressive, really both ends of the floor, Jason, in the opening 20. Well, after the first two possessions where the Catamounts got good looks at the hoop, the Tar Heels locked in defensively and really blew this game away. Starting the second half, Western Carolina in a zone. You must rotate and know where your rotations are and be on time, because if not, the Heels have four guys on the floor that can pass fine. Made with the pass, Pinson with the finish inside. Reese Parks had 13 to lead the Catamounts. Look at Brooks cover. Here's Halverson. 10 to shoot. Goslin will cut it loose. Boy, for a 6'7 kid, he's got a nice stroke. That's eight for Mark Goslin, the junior from France. The North Carolina has gone to exclusively their run and jump defense. And if you're patient, if you're strong and composed in the trap, you're going to get a good look. There, the rotation from one end of the court to the other. Backdoor cut, Barry. Scoop. Brooks, the finish. Five for Garrison Brooks. Matumbo whistling a foul off the ball. Amius, remember, was saddled with fouls in the first half, and there's another look at the basket down on the Brooks ball. Joel Berry with the foul. Drew the defender, Amius, of Brooks. That freed Brooks to come down the lane for a nice tip-in dunk. Halverson. Jubakar Matumbo. Ten to shoot. Parks. Front rim miss. Amy has crashed the glass. He came out of North Platte Community College, Jason, has a reputation of a guy that'll go to the rim at both ends. And that'll be a valuable commodity in the Southern Conference once they get cranked up. Well, he's a big-time athlete. The issue is he had three fouls early in that first half, which led him to the bench. Make no mistake, the Catamounts need his inside presence, his athleticism, and his physicality on the interior. Kenny Williams had it spit out. About two minutes gone here in the second half. Carolina's pushed the lead a point, out to 28 now. Amius on the drive around Brooks. May the rebound, here's the outlet with Kenny Williams against Gosselin. Got it blocked. Barry recovers. May, Brooks punched it in. Tight passing lanes for Carolina there. A nice pass from Luke May. But Brooks with a grown man finish. Meet me at 11 feet and I'm going to throw it down. <laughs> Talked a lot about Luke May scoring the basketball. Such a high clip. His rebounding. But he's an improved passer as well. But Tumbo. Amius will drive it and draw the foul. Another look at this. Luke May with the dish. Garrison Brooks. I don't want it all. Just give me what you owe. <laughs> Going up high with authority. Nice finish at the rim, young fella. First for May, second on Carolina. And here is Mike Amius from Lake Worth, Florida. 72% free throw shooter, averaging nine a game. Scoreless after that first half foul trouble. First free throws of the night for the Catamounts, who are 62%. Back to some man, Jason, after an opening sequence of zone from Larry Hunter's team. Barry. Couldn't finish. Halverson. Looked for an early advantage, didn't have it, and lost it. And a foul will be called in the backcourt on Matt Halverson. He's got a tie to the Tar Heels. His dad, Mike Halverson, was a pitching coach here in the late 80s on the College World Series team for then Mike Roberts, the head baseball coach at the time. So Matt Halverson, Mike's son, is playing in the Smith Center tonight. 
young man from Kingsport, Tennessee, went to Christ School in Arden for a prep year after playing at uh, Dobbins Bennett over in the Tri-City area. Good shooter. Valuable guy in the league once they get into Southern Conference play. He's an excellent shooter there. A freshman mistake. Dribbling to an area that's a trap area for the Tar Heels leads to a turnover. And when you give the Heels extra opportunities, it can lead to transition baskets and in the half court from the ball screen. And once again, you must be connected in your communication or the Heels will make you pay. Amias inside. His first points come on a dunk. <laughs> Carolina lead 31. Williams. Here's Brooks. Tried to go inside to May. Deflected and recovered Goslin on the Tar Heel turnover. Park spots up. And Williams finds the rebound. Carolina flips the floor. Bounce ahead. Brooks. And Amius blocked it out of there. Look ahead, and Goslin will catch and score. Ten can, now for Goslin. You can see the element to the game that Amius brings to the Catamounts, protecting the rim athleticism. But you can't rest on a making transition with the finish. You must sprint back, get matched up, and find number two in white because he's going to attack early and often. His second three now of the second half. 12 for Barry. And he'll get a reach and a foul on Garrison Brooks. And that'll get us to a timeout. Second on Brooks. Joel Barry. Jason's calling for threes and Barry's delivering. Back after this. Saturday Basketball is brought to you by Toyota. Visit your local Toyota dealer today. Toyota, let's go places. And Husqvarna Auto Mower. All-star lawns start with Auto Mower. Seeing is believing at automower.us. Well, it's a five-game slate in the ACC tonight. And one final already in. Virginia Tech has gone to 8-1. and one. They beat Radford from across the New River Valley. 95 to 68 is the final there. Buzz Williams' team got 20 from Justin Bibbs in the victory. Carolina's been in control since the early stages here tonight in Chapel Hill in the second meeting all time ever with Western Carolina. In almost 61 years since they played. Parks out front with the clock winding down. Had it blocked by Pinson. Barry slicing through. And it bounces away and last touched by the Tar Heels. Thirty-two point lead. Carolina had 11 threes in the Stanford game. And tonight they have got 10. Amius lost it off his leg, turns it over to Carolina. Well, that's a set that Western Carolina loves to run to get Amius at the high post, isolated with a shooter on the strong side. But West, they want him to be able to rip and go with his right hand. They are unable to, the turnover. And on the road against this North Carolina team, you must take care of the ball. Henson threw that ball over his shoulder to Barry on the right wing. There's not a lot this guy doesn't do to help your team. And I'm not sure he looked when he threw it. Well, it got there. It didn't end up in the third <laughs> row. Look, at watch this. Watch. Oh, he saw him. Okay. He saw him over the shoulder pass when you... When you catch it on that low block, now he's not a big guy, but if you catch on the low block, the opposite slot is the look you're, you're trying to get to. That's just repetition in practice. That ball got batted away. Parks, nice play for the Catamounts. Larry Hunter's team tried to get an early transition chance. Carolina covered it up nicely. Amy is backing in on Manley. Had it blocked out of there. May finally recovers, pulls it away from Steger. And there you see the length of Manley. And when a big guy protects the yard, you must feed him. Nice pass once again from Theo Pinson. But Sterling Manley oozes ability. So long, the block shot, able to run the floor in transition. 
Nice find from Pinson. Carolina's got their largest lead of the night, their largest lead of the season here at 34. Six to shoot. Amy a strong take to the basket. Mike Amius has four. Backdoor lob and a foul. I think Amy has pushed Manley. But the Tar Heels getting in transition here, Jason. What's the team that loves to run and attack early? The fine, you run, the Heels guards will look ahead and give you the basketball. Carolina, Carolina basketball is known for their secondary break. That's a primary break there. You run rim to rim if you're a big. A good chance you're going to get a layup. Western Carolina, their big man saddled now with this fourth foul. 13 to go. Play Tech feeds Manley strong to the rack, and he'll draw a foul. And I think that is on Adam Sled. It's his third. And that's the third foul on the Catamounts here in the second half. Amius with four, as you mentioned, Jason. Sled's got three. Peterson, three. And the free throw from Manley makes Carolina 10 of 14 at the line. Western Carolina just two free throw attempts. Those were Amius back earlier in the half. Sterling Manley whose great-great-uncle was Willie Thrower. Jason, he's the first African-American quarterback in the National Football League. That's big time. Twelve forty-two to go. Parks, Goslin. And here is Sled, the up and under. Blocked by Manley. Felton going front court. Robinson tried to deliver it back, turned it over. Parks, long three. Play tech the rebound. And the crossing pass to Robinson in the corner. Skip it back. Play tech's three. This game is the full 94 right now. Sled scores for the Catamounts. First points for Adam Sled. And the Catamounts giving the Hills a taste of their own medicine. <laughs> Pitching the ball ahead, the rim run. Easy to win transition. One of few transition baskets the Catamounts have been able to muster in this contest. Playtech bangs home his fourth three of the year. He's got five. Carolina's got 72. 11 and a half to roll. One and done is Western. Luke May just secured his double-double. And that ball gets stripped from Manley on the way up. Sixth of the season for Luke May. By the way, he's scoreless here in the second half. Goslin the rebound. And inside Steger scores. On those Steger's first points. And here is Robinson at the other end. That's unacceptable for Western Carolina. But more importantly, Wes, we got some tired players on the floor oh right God. now. These guys going up and down, hands on their knees. See four guys at the score table. It's like a relay. Steger. Goslin has no problem from there, except it's short. Playtech tries the other corner. Manley now, and he lost the ball. Goslin went down, and there was no whistle. I think Manley was surprised. He's tired. Yep, that too. <laughs> he's tired. He sees, he sees his substitution at the scoring table, and he's just looking for breaking the action right now. 12 rebounds from May. Felton fouled on the drive. Carolina will get free throws. The Tar Heels on, the, on a roll, sharing the basketball. Play tech. Three ball, corner pocket, 
And in transition, Robinson goes up high for the jam. Patriots, Dolphins. ACC College Basketball is brought to you by the official corporate champions of the ACC. Geico. New York Life. And Bojangles. Well, the seventh Tar Heel National Championship banner. Third for Roy Williams, 05, 09, and then last April out in Phoenix. So Leak Felton at the line after the foul on Sled, which is his fourth. He and Amius have four now. First free throw attempts for Raymond Felton's nephew, Jalik. That mean we're old. We're getting old. <laughs> Raymond Felton, backup point guard for the Oklahoma City Thunder, having a nice season. Here is Johnson, the, well, the freshman from Memphis Kirby they're excited about, this Desmond Johnson. Feel like they got a recruiting coup when they got him to leave Kirby High School to come to Cullowee. And there's a foul on Carolina. And we'll get a couple of free throws, I think, here from Marcus Thomas. And Thomas will go to the line. First free throws for him on the year as Huffman draws the foul. And the free throw good. This uh, Desmond Johnson, Jason, guess who his high school coach was? And, and I teed this up just for you tonight. <laughs> Tell me. Former Memphis Tigers, Cheyenne Gibson. Nice. <laughs> nice. When's the last time you thought about Cheyenne Gibson, Cheyenne right? Cheyenne Gibson. Huh? It's a blast from the past. <laughs> That's why I got it for you tonight. <laughs> I delivered that one. I knew you'd remember Cheyenne Gibson. Not many would. Some of the folks in the early stages of what? The old Conference USA, right? Great Absolutely. Midwest. The great Midwest, yeah. Played for the Tigers. That's when Larry Finch was coaching him. Whoa, what is Felton doing? Feeding Big Huffman for the dunk. What Felton's doing is putting some sauce on that ball handling. <laughs> you have to spoon feed these bigs right now where they're comfortable inside when they have their back to the basket, hands ready for a guard just to deliver the basketball. Foul on Huffman going over the back is his second, fourth on Carolina. So here's tonight's Z-Max performance play, Jason. Little shake and bake, crossover behind the back, through traffic. Delique Felton puts 33 in the blender, the nice pass, and Huffman, a big, strong player, who the third member of the trio, the freshman front line, that's going to continue to improve with the finish. That ball got knocked away, and Steger gets his second field goal. And Huffman there, the way he went up with the aggression to dump that basketball, equally he has to chin that ball when he receives it. You can't drop the ball so guards can get to it. That's, that's where he's going to get better. And that time Felton was trying to get it to Brandon Huffman. And Roy Williams... Some teaching points here for some of these young guys. Well, he's telling his big fella, you were open. Mm. You look for the basketball, you're open. The Hills right now with four freshmen on the floor. This is valuable experience these guys are gaining. They're getting action on the floor, a chance to execute and work and grow together in live action. But Coach Williams not accustomed to having this many new players on the squad. A lot of teaching taking place, but you can see the potential in all of them. How about the play by Brandon Robinson? The bounce pass came into Brooks, and Robinson reached in there and scraped it off his leg and over the inline, so it goes back to Carolina. And the ball got through, and Coach Williams is telling Huffman once again, know your surroundings, know where you are. Don't just stand in one spot. Have active feet, active hands. That's a pass that should have been deflected. And there's Brandon Huffman's second field goal. Carolina with 79 points. Out of the corner, Otto Steger. His seventh three of the year. He's got seven tonight. Felton wraps it around for play tech. Eight for Andrew Playtech. Coach Williams telling Jaleek Felton, be under control, lost the ball. A nice find and left-hand skip pass. 
Freshman point guard, just do the little things. No home run plays. Take care of the ball, run the team. Marcus Thomas's jump shot bounded away. Here's Robinson, high dribble, lost the handle on it. Offensive foul will be called as he charged into Brooks. Timeout, Chapel Hill. Carolina in front. Well, number 11, North Carolina at home here tonight. First meeting in almost 61 years against Western Carolina. And the Tar Heels have been impressive. Led by 27 at the break. And as we rejoin you from Smith Center, the lead is up to 37 now at 82 to 45. And Luke May, I'll tell you what, he's delivered on our hearty star to watch, hasn't he? Well, just another night for Luke May. Another double-double. Six now on the season. And showing his full game with five assists as well. Having an excellent season, in my opinion, the best story in college basketball so far. His improvement and his leadership on this young Tar Heel team. Long rebound for Garrison Brooks. Play tech with Robinson, Brooks, Felton, and Brandon Huffman on the floor for Coach Williams. And backdoor of the line for Brooks. New season high in assists for Carolina. Matumbo misses the layup. That's 25 assists tonight for the Tar Heels on 30 baskets. And almost their 17th turnover, which is also a season high. Out front, long three for Brandon Robinson. His second of the night. And that all began with the hustle. And play tech diving on the floor, ensuring the Tar Heels got an extra possession. Robinson injured early this season, a shoulder injury, missed some time, just finding his flow. And Brandon Huffman asserting himself, going up high for the block. Another lob. They try and finish it again. Huffman missed the dunk. They scramble, and play tech's got it. Felton a tee up three. This has been the coming out party for Jaleek Felton. Knocking down shots from distance, controlling the team, handling the basketball, finding others. Tar Heels in command. We're wired with one. New Year's Day is attacking in their secondary break. Maybe the oldest play in the great Coach Smith playbook. The alley-oop over the top, and Jaleek Felton having himself a ball game. Three ball corner pocket. Mm. The young point guard, 12 points, five assists, and probably most important to Coach Williams, only one turnover in this contest. Well, he missed it at the top tonight. We told you before the game, Carolina now seventh Woods has a stress fracture in his left foot. His return is uh, unknown at this point. Out indefinitely is seventh Woods, the sophomore from Columbia, South Carolina. That time, that was contested by Manley. Here's Playtech, and on the run out, whoa, Felton! High dribble, couldn't pull it. Devin Peterson, after not playing on Monday night, back in the lineup here tonight, Smith the long three. That's Maurice Smith's third three of the year. And it's a 90-48 to 48 game. Playtech a three. Another one. That's three threes for Andrew Playtech. Miscommunication defensively. You face the Tar Heels, you must sprint back, guard the ball, get matched up, and understand where your rotations are. Playtech has shown he's a knockdown shooter from distance. 15 threes on the night for Carolina. Most since November of 2012. And there's a travel on Ashley Williams, 6'5", senior from Morehead City. And here comes Aaron Rollman for the eighth time this year, senior from Gastonia, into the Carolina lineup. As Larry Hunter knew it was an uphill fight tonight, Jason. His team has won two of their last three to get to three and six. But as you said, Cincinnati, Minnesota, Clemson, Carolina tonight. Some tough nights in the early season for the Catamounts. Tend to shoot. 
Robinson, Manley to miss. The rebound and the score. And that will be it for Adam Sled. Five on Adam Sled. Sterling Manley will get free throws when we continue after this. Diamonds, the jewelry, ex by the official corporate champions of the ACC, Food Lion, and Toyota. Well, Garrison Brooks finishes off the alley-oop. Second meeting all time between the Catamounts and Tar Heels. The last time, that guy right there had 26. The National Player of the Year, 1957, Lenny Rosenbluth. Mr. Rosenbluth, a scoring machine. <laughs> Guy that could knock down shots with consistency, had great size. Yep. And for us former players, he made sure to let us know just how good he was. <laughs> you walk down the hallways of the locker room, you see his picture on the wall and his stats, and you have to respect hey. the guys that laid the groundwork. <laughs> his jersey is retired in the rafters. It's on that front row. Yeah. That limited edition front row. <laughs> Is that what it is? Limited edition. Limited edition on Absolutely. the front row? That front is that row. right? Free throw by Manley good to finish off the three-point play. Limited edition front row. And the crowd is chanting, we want biscuits. There is a promotion for the Tar Heels at 100 points. And it's been going on here for what? Better part of a decade and change, Jason? Everybody loves biscuits. Right. If they get 100 or more, they have a coupon for a free biscuit. Well, I'll change that. Everyone loves free stuff. <laughs> That's right. Anything free, yeah. people are all about yeah, I've it. I've got two college freshmen. You just say Absolutely. free and they're in. It just happens to be biscuits in this case. And Manley fouled. I've been impressed with Sterling Manley. And Garrison Brooks, for that matter, too, Jason. Well, the trio, you can see glimpses of what they can be. And you talk about the teaching Coach Williams is having to do with this young front line. Telling Manley there, come to a jump stop, power that ball to the hoop. This young man, a lot of times, off balance. Once he feels out his body, gains that balance, you see the length, you see the athleticism. I think he has a bright future here in North Carolina. Brandon Robinson out. Shea Rush is in. The 6'6 sophomore from Fairview, Kansas. Who played three minutes here on Sunday against Tulane. And Walker Miller, a 6'10 freshman from Greensboro, waits at the table. But Manley can't let him in the game because the free throw rattled out. Smith. And this is Devontae Fuller. Down the lane and lost it on the way up. Last touch by the Tar Heels. And now Walker Miller will check in. Well, the Tar Heels getting the job done from distance. Started early and often. Kenny Williams knocking him down. Luke May, Jalik Felton off the bench. And it's spread like wildfire. Everyone getting in on the action. The Tar Heels 71% from the three-point line. And Wes, I'm going to go out on a limb. If you shoot 71% from three, there's a good chance you're going to dominate the contest. And now the young men who practice hard every day prepare the players for live game action. They get their opportunity. Miller with the catch. Nice kiss off the glass. Wow. My goodness. 15 made three points out of 21. That's something that doesn't happen when you're in the gym by yourself <laughs> in pre-practice on many occasions, let alone when the lights are on and the popcorn's popping. First free throw of the year for Walker Miller, good. Sitting on 99. And the foul in traffic is Devontae Fuller. Went into the toughest part of the forest in there battling big guys. And it's on Aaron Roman. So here is Fuller. From Hickory. And he's 4-4 four four at the line this year. Make it 5-5. Five five. 
You're Western Carolina. There's nothing to drop your head about. You came in, you competed, you were out man outsized. This is a team that's going to have an opportunity to compete in the Southern Conference. Yep. Larry Hunter, one of the very best coaches in all of college basketball. He's going to have this team prepared, and they will continue to get better as the season progresses. And Maurice Smith challenges the hell ball. With Walker Miller out in the midcourt area, so that'll award possession to the Catamounts here with 2.22 to play. 17 turnovers now on the Tar Heels. That's a season high, too. Smith and Fuller will be charged with basket interference. That's just the way it's gone for the Countermounts today. Even when shots have a chance of going in, still on the rim in the cylinder, the tip, the officials call it off. Aaron Roman. Miller at 17 feet. Roman the rebound. Skips it for Rush. Back for Roman. And the Tar Heels hit the century mark. Smith lost it over the end line. It'll go back to Carolina with 95 seconds left. What'd you say? Everybody likes something free, right? Everyone loves something free. <laughs> and I'd like to think 25 and white Roman believes they're clapping for his finish at the rim. <laughs> they're clapping for those biscuits. <laughs> Jalik Felton adds to the three-point barrage. That is a record under Roy Williams. 16. Wow. Three-pointer from Ashley Williams. Good. And Roy Williams is under a minute away, Jason, from being a part of his 1100th win as a college coach. 824 as a head guy. 825 as a head guy. 275 as an assistant. How about that number? It's a lot of victory laps, a lot of preparation, a lot of time watching film, preparing your team, and a lot of really good players coming out producing that game plan on the floor. Final half minute here at Chapel Hill. Tar Heels will be 9-1. Western Carolina will be 3-7. And, and that will be that. Ball got knocked out of bounds. It'll go to the Catamounts in the final 13 seconds. A little bit of coaching going on in the last five minutes tonight, even though with the big number. Well, these absolutely. guys are all being... Well, they're all being critiqued, and mm -hmm. we've spoken about the hot shooting, but make no mistake, when the Tar Heel staff watches film, the thing Coach Williams is going to point out more than anything, the turnovers, are, a season-high turnovers this afternoon for the Hills. Well, Roy Williams and Larry Hunter, a handshake. And the Tar Heels beat the Catamounts tonight. Led by 27 at the half. And win for the ninth time this year by 43. Impressive performance. Carolina shoots 57% from the floor. And they shoot 73% from behind the three-point line. Timeout Chapel Hill, back with more after this. It goes to nine and one. Tar Heels now will not play for, what, nine days, ten days? Because they play Tennessee a week from Sunday in Knoxville. But the three-point shot tonight, Jason, is the difference. Really an impressive offense. West has started early and often, sharing the basketball, moving without the ball. And multiple guys got it going early. Kenny Williams, Luke May, when you dribble drive and you spot it beyond the arc, the Hills are an unselfish team. Attacking in transition, early offense. 
When you knock down 16 threes in a contest, understanding everyone's involved, you're sharing the basketball, the Heels are a tough team to beat. And everyone got in on the action. A hot basketball and a dominant performance from the Tar Heels. Well, six different guys hit threes tonight. Everybody had at least two. Jalik Felton had four. In fact, he had all four of his three-point attempts from the floor on the way to 16, the most three-point field goals under Roy Williams. Twelve different guys scored for Carolina. We told you they shot 57%. And Kenny Williams, of course, had a great first half and didn't need to have a great second half. Well, he's missed the first half. He's a guy that's done the job getting the hills off to an excellent start. He got it going from three, but defensively attacking passing lanes. Live ball turnovers lead to easy opportunities in transition. But this guy is known as a knockdown shooter. When his feet are set, his hands are ready, his eyes are locked, he's going to knock down the shots. Well over 50% from three. Carolina winner tonight by 43. Back to Chapel Hill with more in a moment. Tar Heels play a week from Sunday in Knoxville against Tennessee and uh, five games on the schedule tonight in the ACC including this one five teams in the AP top 25 now remember Notre Dame got beat last night at the Horn at home by Ball State Virginia lost in Morgantown to WVU Miami looked impressive against Boston U and the Canes are in a break too now a lot of these teams Jason get into an extended break with the semester exams but well, when you look at what Miami did Wes and I believe you call that game. Lonnie Walker, the emergence of that young man, the freshman five-star, mm. his ability to do so many things on the floor, can shoot it from three, a big-time athlete. With that talented club, you add him to the mix coming off the bench. That's a dimension that Coach Larinaga hasn't had in some time. The Miami Hurricanes are going to be a dangerous team as this season moves forward. You see at the bottom, Syracuse beat UConn in the Jimmy V last night at the Garden, and you'll get to see the Orange against Colgate on Saturday and uh, you won't want to miss a minute of ACC College Hoops from the Carrier Dome in Central New York. Check your local listings on the Regional Sports Network. And, of course, Jim Mayhem's got a brand-new team, and one of the exciting young players for the Orange is the freshman O'Shea Brissett. And you see 16 points, 10 rebounds last night in the win against UConn. And Jason's got a chance to visit with the double-double guy here tonight, and that's Luke May. Luke, you guys really got things going there in the first half with your defense. What did Coach Williams talk about for you guys to come out with that defensive mindset to really set the tone early? And he just talked about uh, just really flying around, being being able to play our stuff. And we trapped a lot tonight, trying to force him to play turnovers. And uh, thought we did a great job on the boards and uh, really shot the ball really well from three, which was really good. Yet another double-double for you on the season. What has been your mindset coming into this season, understanding that you're the upperclassman on the front line now to lead this young group. Yeah, Coach challenged me at the beginning of the year to really uh, step up, show the young guys how to work, how to be aggressive, and uh, Coach has given me all the confidence in the world, and my teammates have put me in great positions to make plays, and it helps when you got guys like Joel and Kenny shooting the ball like they do, and uh, just really exciting where we're at, and we got a couple of tough games coming up and getting ready for conference play. You talked about the three-point shooting, 16 made three-point shots, six guys made at least two. Were you guys seeing a big basket today? You shared the basketball how are you guys able to knock down a school record 16 threes in one contest i mean it's it's great to have so many shooters out there jaleek hit three i mean jaleek's really good play off the bench and uh b rob hit two which was huge for us and we had a lot of good minutes off the bench and we're gonna need that going forward but uh myself joel and kenny are gonna bring it at the start of the game and we just need guys to follow our lead thanks luke good luck the rest of the way thank you so much jason. Wes. all right jason thanks luke congratulations on a great effort another double double Fifth of the year, sixth of his career. Carolina wins tonight by 43. Final words from the Smith Center in Chapel Hill on a Wednesday night of ACC Hoops after this. Sunday when they're in Knoxville to meet a Tennessee team that beat uh, Georgia Tech the other night, by the way, in Atlanta. And here's another look. Uh, they'll get Wofford, Ohio State here. And then before you know it, conference play. Now, Boston College and Duke do play this weekend. That kind of takes the lid off the ACC. But... End of December, Jason. Get ready. 
ACC basketball is back. Yeah. We understand it's the best league in college basketball. Many excellent teams this year. You look at that schedule and the game that jumps out at me, you never look ahead. But Florida State absolutely dominated a very good Florida team. Yeah, they did. Lennon Hamilton led by Terrence Mann. His ball club is tough. They're physical. They're flying around, and they're a better shooting team this season. Florida State Seminoles are going to be a team you're going to hear from throughout this season. Interesting tonight, we see a freshman in Jalik Felton. These are not the, the high marquee freshmen. Yeah. Uh, saw Lonnie Walker last night in our ACC College Hoops package go for 26. Everybody knows about Marvin Bagley and Wendell Carter and uh, Gary Trent and Trayvon Duvall and all the things going on at Duke. But as this league gets ready for conference play, you're going to hear more about the Jalik Feltons. You're going to hear more about uh, Fiondu Kabangali playing Absolutely. at Florida State. Uh, MJ Walker's at Florida, Florida State. State. There, there are a lot of young guys in this league that people are just going to start to find out about. And the one we saw today, Jalik Felton, right. he has a golden opportunity. I think he's going to solidify that backup point guard position, just simply take care of the basketball. He showed he could knock down outside shots. This is a talented young player, and he's surrounded by veteran players as well. He has a golden opportunity, but as you said, a lot of talented players, young players in this ACC season. Great to be with Jason Capel tonight. Carolina impressive. 17 threes for the Tar Heels on the way to a 43-point win tonight against Western Carolina. Don't forget ACC College Hoops continues this weekend. Colgate at Syracuse. For our producer Casey Carter, our director Ken Neal, West Durham from Chapel Hill. Good night.